Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Passive Probes. This short presentation provides a practical introduction to the common 10x passive probes provided with Rodian Schwartz oscilloscopes. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of passive probes. If you're not already familiar with passive probes, you might want to watch the presentations Understanding Passive Probes and Understanding Probe Compensation before beginning this presentation. Let's start by reviewing a simple 10x passive probe. As you should already know, a 10x probe has a probe tip containing both a 9 mega ohm resistor and a fixed capacitor. It also has a variable capacitance in the compensation box near the scope attachment point. In addition, there's a small metal pin near the scope attachment point, which lets the scope know that we're using a 10x probe. There is, however, one important piece missing from this picture. The missing piece is the ground connection. Recall that if we want to measure a voltage, we need to attach to the circuit at two points in order to measure the difference in potential between them. In basic scope measurements, we often make voltage measurements with reference to the grounded scope input. This means that one of our two circuit attachment points needs to be ground. When using a standard passive probe, this ground connection is most often made using a ground lead that's attached to the probe body itself. Here's what this looks like on an actual probe. The ground lead, which often terminates in an alligator type clip, is connected by inserting this crescent shaped piece into the probe body. When using a passive probe, the ground lead is attached to circuit ground, here the flooded part of this board, and the probe tip is placed at the measurement point. It's extremely important to keep the ground lead as short as possible. Excessively long ground leads add inductance, and this in turn can cause waveform distortion or ringing, especially on waveforms with fast transition times, like square waves or pulse signals. For example, with a very short ground lead, there is little to no ringing on this pulsed waveform. Some ringing is visible when we use a typical ground lead, and a very long ground lead creates substantial ringing. Keeping the ground lead as short as possible is always a good idea when using passive probes. Rodian Schwartz passive probes are usually provided with a number of small accessories. These include an extra or spare tip, a ground lead, a retractable hook, insulating caps, a BNC adapter, a ground clip, and identification tags. We've already discussed the ground lead, but let's take a minute to go over some of the other common passive probe accessories. The retractable hook fits over the standard probe tip and contains a spring-loaded hook that makes it easy to grab and maintain a stable connection to things like component leads, wires, etc. Of all the passive probe accessories, the retractable hook is, by far, the most common and most widely used. In some cases, we want to connect our probe directly to a BNC connector, and this can be done using the BNC adapter. This adapter is slipped over the end of the probe tip, allowing the probe tip to be directly inserted into a BNC type connector. The ground clip is also simply pushed onto the end of the probe tip so that it rests on the metallic ground collar. The ground clip is a convenient way to provide a ground connection to a nearby trace or pin. Insulating caps are useful when we're probing in crowded areas and want to avoid inadvertently making contact with nearby components, pins, traces, etc. The insulating caps also protect against short circuits by covering up the metallic ground ring near the probe tip. There are two basic types of insulating caps. The first is the standard protective cap. The second is the IC or integrated circuit cap, which makes it easier to probe a single pin on a chip or similar component. Both are simply pushed over the probe tip. Colored identification tags are helpful when using multiple probes, since they allow us to easily color code probes and scope channels. These tags may be in the form of a tube, as shown here, or in the form of simple rings. One final topic we touched on earlier is automatic attenuation detection. Recall that 10x passive probes reduce or attenuate the signal level by a factor of 10. As mentioned earlier, a small pin on the scope end of the probe is sensed by a ring around the scope input, and this tells the scope that the measured signal level has been reduced by a factor of 10. For example, if we generate a 2 volt peak to peak sine wave and measure it with a 10x probe, we'll see a peak voltage of 1 volt if the 10x probe is properly detected, but only 100 millivolts if the probe attenuation is not automatically detected. It's especially important to be aware of this if you're using 10x probes from a different manufacturer, or if you're using probes that can be switched between 1x and 10x. 
Let's end with a brief summary. A 10x passive probe is the most common and most widely used type of oscilloscope probe, and these are the basic probes provided with all Rodian Schwartz oscilloscopes. In addition to the basic probe itself, most passive probes come with a variety of accessories that can make probing easier and more efficient. Remember that to measure a voltage, we need to attach our probe at two points, one of these typically being ground. The ground lead also needs to be kept as short as possible, since the inductance created by long ground leads can cause ringing or other distortion in the acquired waveforms. And finally, it's important to be sure that the scope recognizes, or is told, when a 10x probe is being used, so that the displayed results reflect the unattenuated voltage levels. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with Passive Probes. If you're interested in learning more about the different types of probes used in oscilloscopes, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.